What's up guys? So today I'm gonna to show you how to properly shim an FA20, uh, the valves. So these things are not self-adjusting. They, they have shims in them uh, and you have to reset this when you need to do a motor rebuild uh, if you're doing any kind of head work on it. Or you can keep them in the same order and measure them and make sure that they're correct. But if you do any kind of valve work, you gotta, you gotta check this and make sure it's good and most likely have to make adjustments. So how they work, these shims, and you're probably not gonna be able to see it on the camera just because it's so tiny, but they all have numbers on them. So this one in my hand says 227. Now, the ones that I have range from 208 to 241. And so we did some, uh, some math here, all right? So we measured them uh, with a caliper. Okay, so here's our notepad of all the numbers we have here. So Jack is going to use the socket to demonstrate how we got these numbers. Down here is an average of all the depths of each shim that we measured, which is the shim is, is like a socket, right? You got your, this fits the valve comes up, this goes on top of the valve, this is your shim depth here. Okay, so you got your depth here that we measured in like this, and they're all the same on all the different ones. We took an average of 3.67 here. Millimeters. Yes, millimeters, sorry. Now. The other numbers here, 5.76, 5.77, 5.7, 5.71, 5.77, that was the number of the entire shim itself. Again, we're using a sock as a demonstration to show you what we're talking about, of the actual uh, entire length of it. We minus that by our average depth, and we come to 2.0, this is number 2, 210. And as you see these numbers, then the 241, we have 241, 239, 241, on the 220, 2.19, 2.23, we've come to the conclusion that that number on the side of the shim is what it reads in millimeters. So it's, if you have number 210, it's 2.10 millimeters. Uh, and this makes it a lot easier. I, I, I figured that's what it was, but we had to make sure. Um, but this makes it a lot easier with shimming it, so you don't, you know, that way you can look on there and know what they are, uh, what they read. You set that to a box, it's fine. Now, with that being said, again, uh, this engine has had valve work done to it, so nothing, nothing is the same. And honestly, it's been so long since I've assembled this thing, or disassembled it, I don't know what shim does where. So, I know it's bad, I should have done a better job with that. But we're gonna start completely from scratch. So, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna completely, I've, I cleaned all the RTV up on all the parts on the cam carriers here. Um, that way we have a nice clean surface here. Uh, and we're gonna dry install this with no RTV, because we're gonna take it back off again. Now I'm gonna randomly put shims on there and we're gonna take measurements every single one of them. Uh, and then we're gonna subtract the amount that it needs to be at, or no, sorry. Yeah, we're gonna subtract the, what it should be at to the number that we get. And that should give us uh, what size shim we need. So let me just show you, let's go ahead and do this. I'm installing the lower carrier here first. Uh, I'm gonna torque them all to 14 foot pounds. And of course I already have the shims installed uh, with the rockers and lifters in there. So here's how I did it. I took the number. So I, I numbered these myself as uh, exhaust one, two, three, four, intake one, two, three, four. And that's what these numbers are here. These numbers represent the number on the shim that I installed. So this way I can keep track as to what I have in there. And when I measure it, I can do my math and figure out what I need to go back in there with or is correct leave it in that location all right so i got everything torqued down here like i said this has all uh, been dry installed meaning no sealant on anything and then these uh, caps were all torqued to uh, 14 foot pounds as well uh, and make sure you keep the orientation how they came off originally that's really important one other note here uh, i don't have the timing chains on i have the pistons uh, in there halfway on both sides and i have both of these loose if you come over here and look at this uh, I've got it to where the lobes on each cams, there are on each cam here, they're not pushing down the valves. You want them to both be idle. Um, this allows you to get a measurement all of them. I know the, the procedure says to do, you know, two cylinders at a time. I'm just gonna do it this way. Uh, it'll be accurate. Uh, we should be at 0.22 millimeters. All right, so we're gonna start with this one here. We're, we're gonna call this exhaust valve one. Oops. You see that fits in there, pretty snug, there's resistance. One up would not fit in here, one down was too loose. So you want a little bit of resistance. 
this comes out to 0.215. As you saw, we want a 0.22. So, come back over here. Uh, Jack, tell me, tell me how you did this. Okay, so we want a 0 0.220, and we've got a 0 0.150. So we need to figure out the difference. This is the one that we're using right here. To figure out the difference of those, we're going to subtract 0 0.150 from 0 0.220. That difference will take from this shim. This shim needs to be smaller to make this gap bigger. So 2.25 minus 0 0.150 is... Um, what was it? It was. Oh, the, well, no, the difference between 2.20 and 0 0.150, not 2.20. The difference between 0 0.220 and 0 0.150 is 0 0.07. Subtracted by that, and you get this. Yeah, so you take that difference of 0 0.07 away from 2.25, and you get 2.18, which is the shim size you need. And the shim, so if we go to. Uh, you can go on to whatever Subaru parts website. This is like their official, um, whichever one you, whichever dealer you go to. But go to the valve mechanism, and there should be a diagram of the cylinder head with the valves. Scroll down, and you'll see all these shims. So here's a part number beside it, but here's the actual size of them, and this is the number you're seeing on the actual shim itself. So for that particular valve, I need to order one of these 2.18. Uh, and then we're going to do this procedure through every single valve. Uh, make sure you document which valve is which. Uh, and write them all down. And then when they come in, make sure you put them in the right order. Um, obviously, because, you know. And then uh, after you install all your shims, uh, recheck them and double check that they are correct. Now, obviously, if the shim, if you have one that matches already, you can reuse that shim, but I don't currently have a 218. I have a 213 and I have one that's bigger. Um, and you can uh, plus or minus a little bit of uh, a space. Um, I think you can vary. There's a spec for that, right? Yeah, there was. The spec is, for the exhaust at least, is... It looks like plus or minus 0 0.02. So technically, I could use a 216 or, or a 220, 220, which I do have a 220. You do have a 220, but I would go straight for a 218. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure they're exactly identical to what I want. I'm going to order them all or use it if I'm going to have them, and then we're going to recheck it all, and then voila. If you're wrong, you've got to do it all over again. It sucks. They're expensive, I know. They're like $8 a pop. Uh, but make this is pretty important. You want your valves to be set correctly. Uh, so yeah, I hope this video helped. Uh, if you want to see, I have a video out, or should be out by the time this video is published. Uh, I have a video out on complete assembly of this engine here. I also have a video on taking one out of a WX. Y'all want to check those out, I'll leave them in the description for you. Uh, appreciate you watching. Please uh, be sure to like, uh, share, all that good stuff. We will catch y'all next time.